Welcome to Filtration Matters, the regular podcast from BOFA, a world leader in portable fume and dust extraction. In this series, we'll be exploring how innovations in filtration and extraction system design are helping improve productivity across multiple industry sectors, including in laser, 3D printing, and electronics. Both experts will discuss how advances in extraction technology are helping optimize manufacturing processes and product quality, while at the same time contributing to a clean, healthy working environment. In the high volume, high speed world of fast moving consumer goods, the FMCG market, productivity makes all the difference. Visit almost any FMCG production line and you'll see laser technology applying codes but up to and beyond 1,000 codes per minute. It's a process critical to maintaining production schedules and it relies on fume and dust extraction technology, filtering the airborne contaminants that could otherwise impact negatively on both mark quality and human health if not effectively controlled. That's where BOFA comes in. And to explain more about the vital role that fume extraction plays in keeping production lines moving, we're joined by Josh Evans, an applications engineer with specialist knowledge of laser-generated emissions. Welcome, Josh. Thanks. Great to be here. Josh, when we think of lasers, we think of high-energy systems. So why has this technology become such a fixture in FMCG markets? What role do they perform? Uh, So lasers act as a coding mechanism um, for consumer goods, things like food, drink, uh, pharmaceutical products, so that you know when it was manufactured, where it was manufactured, and also things like sell by date, so you know how long it's going to be used for. And I guess the other advantage of laser technology is the the speed that they operate at. So what sort of speeds are we generally looking at uh, for FMCG uh, operations? So the coding operation um, for years was the rate limiting step for consumer goods. So it was the one that was slowing everything down. But uh, the laser technology has now seemed to catch up and we're getting up to speeds of uh, a thousand products per minute. Um, so when you see these going past, you can really understand the, 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 the rates that the products are being generated at. We'll talk about laser fume and dust extraction systems in more detail later, but now might be a good time to understand why manufacturers need filtration technology in the first place for these particular processes. So when a laser is coding onto a product, um, you're removing some of that material um, and that's going to become airborne. Um, So there's a number of different reasons why you want to capture and filter those airborne contaminants. the, the first reason on people's minds is um, health and safety. So if something's in the air that's not supposed to be there, then you don't want to be breathing it in. Um, but also it can improve um, the quality of, a, of the code. So if there's lots of particles, lots of dust in the air, that causes a scattering um, effect on the light from the laser and uh, creates poor code quality, um, then they'll typically be a system checking if that code is readable and if it isn't it'll get rejected Um, so if you've got uh, lots of particulate in the air you're going to get poor code quality which means to more product rejection and therefore higher consumer costs for the business also as you can imagine lots of dust in the air um, that's going to get into moving parts like conveyor belts and stuff like that um, and increase wear and tear on the products in general. So thinking about FMCG, and we've spoken about the speed of canning lines, but where else might we find lasers in this market? Well, if you look at pretty much any product in the supermarket, um, it's going to have some form of sell by date, some sort of form of code um, on it. But beyond that, we're seeing it more and more in things like components for um, electronics goods or automotive manufacturer where if there's a particular defect then you need to know exactly which batch um, that uh, that product was manufactured in and therefore the the scale of the issue where which products may be affected and also there's lasers being used in slightly stranger applications Uh, for example the stone wash on denim jeans 
uh, is quite often now done by a laser, uh, as well as those uh, rips that you might see on those genes. Uh, we've seen lasers being used uh, to put the grill lines on stakes or to mark onto the side of wine barrels. It, it's, it's really limitless. Anywhere where you've got products that need an individualized mark put on them, you'll often find a laser. Okay, so let's talk about emissions and coming back to the FMCG market, what sort of fume or particles can be generated by lasers and what could be the consequences for human health if these aren't adequately controlled? So what's being given off is largely going to depend on uh, the material itself. So, for example, if you're lasering onto a metal, it's going to give off very uh, different emissions to uh, if you're lasering onto a plastic. But in general, we would expect lots of particles to be given off in the kind of uh, micron and sub-micron range. Uh, that means that the diameter of the particle um, is going to be around one micron in diameter. For those that don't know, if you take a meter and divide it by a thousand, you get a millimeter. And then if you divide that by a thousand, uh, you get a micron or a micrometer. But where you are lasering onto materials like plastics, um, and other organic uh, materials, there may also be a decomposition effect where the laser actually changes the chemical structure of the material, causes it to break down and form new chemicals. A very common one, not specifically from the laser coding industry, but from the laser industry in general, is when you're lasering onto um, acrylic, also known as polymethyl methacrylate. Um, it decomposes that into methyl methacrylate and gives off a very pungent odor. So you're likely going to be get, getting a mixture of particles and gases being given off. Um, in terms of the health implications, it's, it's going to depend on a number of different factors. Breathing in some level of particles, uh, we, we do that every day. But when it's in high enough concentrations, sustained over long periods of time, and also depending what those particles are made out of, that may have further health implications. One of the key uh, guidelines for understanding what that those health implications might be is looking at the occupational exposure limit, which is known by a number of different names in different countries. For example, in the UK, it's the workplace exposure limit um, in a document called EH40. And that gives you the maximum average concentration of a particular material or chemical that workers are allowed to be exposed to in the workplace. And the lower um, that number, the more severe the perceived health risk. Beyond the health aspects to, to extraction, the other consideration for manufacturers, I guess, is the impact that any airborne emissions might have on the laser itself and the quality of the mark. So is that an important aspect of uh, of of extraction technology. Absolutely. And it's why we see such a high connection rate um, in this particular industry. So as I've mentioned before, um, when the particles are in the air, they can cause a diffraction effect on the light from the laser beam, uh, which basically means that less energy makes it to um, the product to the material from the laser, and therefore you're not going to get as clear a mark. But on top of that, if any of those dust particles end up on the lens itself, that will further affect the quality of the mark, but it may also cause hot spots that damage the laser lens. So um, it could lead to increased costs of replacement parts or even um, increased downtime as you're constantly having to stop the line, clean the lens, restart it back up again. So obviously this is a very fast moving industry in terms of the product lines. So how does Bofa go about filtering the fume that's generated when speeds are moving at such a fast pace? Yeah, the, the production lines are getting faster and faster. 
when we're talking about a thousand codes per minute, the the uh, product's probably moving at least 20 meters in that time period. Um, and when the laser ejects material from the product, the emissions are going to have the same velocity that the, the product originally did. So it definitely proves a challenge when it comes to, to capturing the fume. Um, we do a number of things to compensate for this. So one thing is going to be increasing the airflow. Um, so if you're increasing your volumetric airflow rate in meters cubed per hour or cubic feet per minute, then you're going to increase the power of the extraction system to capture uh, fumes. Uh, essentially, the fume has more energy, so we need to inject more energy into the system. Another thing is to use the movement of the product uh, to our advantage. So if the movement of the product is pushing the fume in a particular direction, then we're going to put our capture device, our nozzle, in that direction. So it's almost guiding it towards, towards our extraction system. Mm -hmm. Another thing to consider is that um, higher production rates means that uh, more fume is going to be generated. Um, so the extractor is going to perform the same in terms of, you know, how many codes before the filters need changing, um, but that's going to happen in a shorter period of time. So maybe we need to compensate as well with larger filters that perform even better. So it's a good time just to explain what a typical Bofa system for laser might look like. Yeah, so I'll start at where our equipment begins, which is the extraction nozzle. Fume capture is possibly one of the most overlooked components, um, but um, it's probably the most important. It doesn't matter how good your filters are if you're not capturing the fume. So we capture the fume using a nozzle or maybe some sort of custom device, transport it through uh, ducting and um, that has to be selected specifically to prevent the, the fume, the particles from dropping out and causing blockages. Then that feeds into our extraction system where we have a pre-filter. The pre-filter is mainly functional. Um, it's uh, just there to capture the biggest particles, um, capture a large number of particles um, to help increase the performance of the extraction system itself. Any particles that make it through the pre-filter um, are going to come into contact with the HEPA filter, which is, stands for high efficiency particulate in air. That's going to be capturing almost every particle that comes through it. Um, after that, we have um, an activated carbon filter that's uh, designed to filter gases and vapors, particularly uh, volatile organic uh, compounds. And we do select that carbon specifically for different industries. So across our extractor range, you'll find a number of different activated carbons depending on what industry it goes into. Uh, in the, the coding industry, that will be particularly uh, important for processes like laser coding onto PET drinks bottles, so your typical plastic drinks bottle. And then finally, um, it runs through uh, a pump, which is driving the airflow, and then can either be exhausted back into the workplace or out um, outside the building. Um, on top of that, one really important factor is our control system. So Again, you, you may have everything else designed really well. If you're not controlling your airflow and your filter management well, then the extractor isn't going to perform well. And final question, Josh, is around the focus on productivity. And you mentioned con the control system and how important that is. So what sort of systems are inbuilt into the BOFA technology? I mean, I've heard mention of IQ. Perhaps you could explain what IQ is. Yeah, IQ is one of our most advanced um, control systems available. Um, it does a number of different things that sound simple but have a really big impact on, on the business. So one of the key things is it's constantly keeping a log of of the uh, the extractor and its parameters, and then operators can download that log and inspect them 
to see if there's any issues, any improvements can be made to the system, see exactly what's been happening on a minute by minute basis, especially on, in the rare event that um, there's ever a fault with one of our extractors. Um, that can be downloaded and sent to BOFA. It's really useful, particularly if there's a language barrier or a time barrier between us and our customer, because uh, we can just read the log and quickly assess what the issue might be. Um, it also has a, a very sophisticated flow control system. What that means is that the operator sets the airflow rate on the front of the extractor, um, and then the extractor will automatically compensate to maintain that airflow rate, um, which sounds simple, but it's it's quite unique in our industry. Um, so whether the filters are blocking or uh, a bit of product falls down the ducting or, or, or anything, a forklift rolls over the hose, the extractor will do its best to compensate for all of those eventualities um, and maintain the airflow so that the capture rate remains constant throughout the life of the extractor. And if it can't achieve those flow rates, it will let the operator know and alert them to it so that corrective actions can be taken. On top of that, it's monitoring the filter blockages independently. So whether it's the pre-filter or the combined filter, it's monitoring those blockages and it gives you a you know, 10, 20, 30% blocked um, warning. Um, so for these high-speed production lines where downtime is so costly to the business, uh, operators can plan and schedule their fills changes in time with uh, previously planned downtime, which again, you're reducing the cost to the end user. Many thanks, Josh, for insights into laser coding and marking in the world of FMCG and highlighting the critical role that extraction technology plays in keeping production lines moving at incredible speeds while contributing to a healthy working environment. If you want to find out more about BOFA and the benefits of filtration and fume extraction, visit BOFAinternational.com where you'll find lots of sector-specific information. You can also catch up on all our podcast content by visiting BOFAinternational.com forward slash podcast. Thank you.